All right, guys, welcome back to Strong Successful Mail. So for today, I'm going to do an update to a very popular video I did a couple weeks ago, which is all about the guy whose ex uh, dumped him to be a free spirit. And then in that time period they were broken up, she hooked up with like 300 dudes, probably at a minimum. And later on in life, now she's back wanting to obviously get back with him because guess what? Guys aren't interested in her anymore because of obviously her past and so on and so forth. And in that story, guys, a quick recap. It was about the guy. He was with this girl for, I think, like seven years, high school, beginning college and all that. And she started hanging around a bunch of gals and became an annoying effinist. And in 2016, when a certain president went into office, she lost her mind, just like a lot of gals around the country, around the world, and broke up with him. Broke up with him because he didn't meet her effinist standards and all that. And she wanted to be a free spirit. And let me tell you guys, for you guys who remember the story, she most certainly was a free spirit. And eventually you find out that she was hooking up with so many dudes, her number was like 300, but we know that's probably just part of it. Even going so far as having a reputation for one time hooking up with eight dudes in one night. But then years later, all of a sudden she's back in his life. He moved on, doing well for himself, she's back in his life. And now she was wanting to get back with him, hoping for a second chance, because wait for it, Guys aren't interested in her anymore because of her past. And she's a, a, a what they call a strong, empowered gal, who are all her friends are a bunch of effinists, who are the size of hippopotamuses, he pointed out. And uh, no other guy's good enough for her, but she's looking for this guy. And so he left off in that story wondering what to do, my advice, etc., etc. And now he provided an update as to what's been going on with her. And let me tell you, she's relentless. She's as relentless as the freaking Terminator trying to get him back because she's desperate to get a guy because she's going to be turning 30 soon. And obviously wants to walk down the aisle, have a family and all that. So this is quite entertaining. So uh, it continues. He says, uh, hello again, SSM. So a lot has happened since I last wrote to you almost two weeks ago. I have since blocked Sophia because she would pester me during late hours, asking me to go have fun or party with her and her friends. Have fun with your ex, Miss 300? I wouldn't go near her, even if I had a hazmat suit on. You'd catch something, you'd catch something just being close to her in the same room. And, and party with her friends? Her effinist friends? What kind of party is with a bunch of feminists? Sitting around the drum circle and talking about the patriarchy? Get the hell out of here. Um, I've grown past going out and partying a long time ago, so it seemed quite strange that she would be into all that lifestyle. It's not strange at all, brother, because she's a professional carousel rider. That's what they do. Um, Sophia did not take me blocking her very well, as she's become more outspoken on how insecure and immature I am due to me refusing to talk to her any longer. Of course, insult you, insult your manhood, because you want nothing to do with her. This is the same girl that dumped you after seven years together just to go be a free spirit amongst many other things. And you've moved on and want nothing to do with her, but you're the bad guy. Imagine that. He says, however, just like a pendulum, Sophie has mood swings. One minute she hates my guts, and the next minute she's asking one of my close friends for a chance to talk to me. I'll elaborate more on that later. I have no idea why she wants us to be together again, but I assume it's because our history together and the fact that she cannot find a suitable husband for herself. Yeah, dude, she's running out of options. She's getting, she's close to 30 years old. She's freaking out about that number because women hate the number 30. It means in their view, society labels them as losers if they're not married or don't have a ring on their finger or at least with a guy with a promising future. She's freaking out. She's done her carousel thing beyond your typical carousel rider. Now she's trying to find a dude she can settle with. And she thinks you're the same nice guy you were back in the day and would just take her back with open arms. But you're not. Uh, I had a chat with my closest bros, and they had many stories to share about Sophia. They kept it from me because they thought it might offend me, but since ever since the wedding incident, they've begun to tell me more details of what they know. Here come the sirens. Sirens, seagulls, there's all sorts of shit around me trying to keep me from doing this video today. I kid you not, guys. Anyhow, for starters, almost all of them know someone who slept with Sophia. None of them have ever slept with her, but they know friends of friends who have. I also know now why she is suddenly coming back to me right now. My friends have told me that there was a rumor that I never got over Sophia, and when it spread around, Sophia jumped at the chance to try to get back and marry me. Yeah, well, who's spreading this rumor? You need to find that person and kick their ass. Uh, 
The rumor is baseless and was probably spread around by one of her college friends in an attempt to coerce me into a relationship with Sophia again. My bros then told me that if I ever got back together with her, they would have collectively smack my brains out. Well, I like your bros. I like the way they think. Uh, rest assured, I do not have any interest in Sophia anymore, and I'm done talking to her. Good. And I'm going to get more about that in a moment. Uh, my sister Marie has also distanced herself from Sophia, as it seems like Sophia has become harsher and harsher towards her. In the previous story, he mentioned that his sister and her were friendly back in the day, and they would sometimes hang out, which I personally thought was not cool, but given how she was treating you, but okay, finally your sis is backing off. And his sister was the gossip queen that would fill him in on things about her and all that. I did not mention this in my previous email, but my sister is married with two kids, and according to her, Sophia might be jealous. I guess some, uh, guess seeing someone younger than you, living the life that you want, may have been too much for Sophia, and that led her to lash out at my sister. They have since ceased communication, but Sophia has sent out a formal yet insin insincere apology, basically saying to my sister, I'm sorry you feel that way, but you started in, you started in the first place and misunderstood my intentions. I'm pretty upset about what she said to Marie, and I do want to just scream at her and say this is a piece of garbage, but I'm holding restraint right now because Marie has asked me just to block and ignore, as that wouldn't hurt that would hurt more than anything I could possibly say. It's like you always tell your viewers, SSM, walking away from a woman is the most powerful thing you can do. I've been saying that since day one, and yes, it drives them absolutely crazy. It's a very simple thing, but makes them nuts. As mentioned before, Sophia did not take being blocked very well, as after only two days of being blocked, she started to try to co contact everyone close to me to check if I'm all right and other stuff. To check if you're all right? No, you just don't want to talk to her. That was the problem when you ran into her at that uh, wedding. You were friendly to her because that's who you are. And she saw that as a way in to try to get you to, uh, you know, give in. Because if you guys remember that, that part of the story in the other uh, in the other video, he ran into her years later at a wedding for a mutual friend. They were sit she sat next to him. And she keeps trying to chat him up and essentially crying and trying to get a second chance. And made up some crap like, what happened to us and blah, blah, blah. Even though she's the one that ruined their relationship. And this dude moved on. Okay. Uh, my friends have told me that uh, she has posted lots of negative things about men and how exes are the worst people to ever exist. She's one of those, huh? Has to post all her feelings and emotions on social media to make herself feel better. She's one of those jackasses. That's one of the many reasons why I've been on Facebook in over two years because of people like that. About their emotions and feelings about politics or whatever the issue is of the day. It's like, shut the fuck up. Grow up. But she's one of those, huh? Um, at, at the time, while slandering me, she also was trying to get in contact with some of my family to see if they could get us talking again. This just weirded out my parents and aunt since they were both aware about the circumstances of our breakup. And it promptly blocked her as well. She started telling everyone that I was afraid of, wait for it, strong, empowered women and was an insecure man-child for blocking her. Even the people who had no interest in our situation suddenly knew everything. Sophia insists that her high body count isn't an issue. Instead, it's my lack of confidence in myself and a fragile male ego. At the start, people sided with her, but after her non-stop ranting and mood swings, most people realized that she was just bitter. Bro, I think it's high time a restraining order. I think a restraining order is in order. If she is posting negative things, slanderous things about you on social media for the world to see, people that you, that know uh, both of you, friends, family, acquaintances, whatever, and this could potentially be damaging to, towards your reputation and damaging not just your personal life but potentially your your business life or your work life. You got darn good reason to speak to an attorney, at least consult an attorney to have her to cut that shit out. Otherwise, you're going to press charges. You got reason right there. But I think a restraining order is definitely in order at this point because she won't leave you alone. She's bugging you, bugging your friends, bugging your family. I mean, she's freaking losing her damn mind. I'm not giving her an out by saying that she's she's mentally ill, therefore she can get away with it. But she's, she's nuts. This is some nice... Uh, Payback for you, given what she put you through, but she won't leave you alone. And I'll get more to that at the end of the story. But I guess you and your viewers are wondering why Sophia's actions are like this. Dude, I'm not wondering. I know exactly why her actions... I called this in the first video within the first, probably, the beginning of the story. 
Uh, and I guess you can shed some light on it as some of the viewers have commented about how bizarre this situation is. I should have included this in the first email, but it slipped my mind as I barely thought of Sophia during that time. Sophia comes from a big family. She has about four siblings and lots of other cousins. Big family, huh? In other words, the women in her family like to fuck. And big surprise, Miss 300 there, which is probably more like Miss 1000, same way. Um, from what I know, they are very conservative, and Sophia hated that as she is a more progressive type of person. However, Sophia still wanted to do the whole big family thing, and so did I. That's why we made plans so early in our lives. So now that she's turning 30, ding, 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 30, what I tell you, in a couple of months, with literally zero prospects of getting married or having kids. She is panicking and getting more malicious. Doesn't take a genius to connect the dots why she's freaking out and losing her mind and resorting to all these things to try to get you. She's turning 30. Uh, before anyone says that a simp would go and marry her because she is pr pretty, let me remind you that Sophie has high standards and refuses to date men who she, she sees as below her. I'm not sure if she'll ever get married, but as the way things look, I, m I think she might end up alone as she absolutely refuses to lower her standards since she knows her worth. In the end of the last video, he mentioned that she was psycho picky and uh, makes a lot of money and a high status, one of those types of gals, but knows her worth, but that doesn't matter if she's a masculine, ball-busting G.I. Jane type of chick or she's not as good looking, or whatever. Because he says here that she's pretty. I would imagine my man here wouldn't, wouldn't have had a girlfriend that was a, you know, an elephant lady, that she was good looking. But at the end of the day, if she's hooking up, she's up with 300 dudes, or probably more, as we all think, that's going to turn off most dudes. Because in the other story, guys, she couldn't get a guy to stay with her because everybody knew about her reputation. She, she couldn't get a guy. And even if she kept it quiet, apparently they'd find out. So this is why she's back with this guy. I'm sure this dude telling the story is awesome and all, but she's desperate. And look at the uh, things she's doing because she's that desperate. I mean, we can all laugh about this, but, you know, it's obvious. Uh, he goes on, Sophia's mood has changed recently after she found my dating profile. I'm not sure which one she found, but according to one of my bros, she's been super apologetic and has been trying to make amends with my sister and trying to get our mutual friends to get back Get us back to talking again. The same sister of yours that she's been given a hard time to. The same friends that she's been given a hard time to. And like you're going to get back with her after all her malicious attacks about you on social media and all that type of things. I mean, okay, lady. Uh, I'm not sure what is going on, but I do want Sophia to give it a rest already. It's been almost two weeks, and she's been a hurtful and cruel person to the people close to me. And even though I vowed to not talk to her, I really want to tell her just to shut the F up and leave me alone. However, her younger brother has messaged me recently asking if we could talk. I was going to completely ignore this and just block him, but he mentioned that he was on my side and Sophia's family was worried about her mental health. They want to have a Zoom meeting with me without Sophia in a couple of days to talk about potentially getting her some help. I agreed to have a short conversation with them, as I remember Sophia's parents and siblings have always been kind to me, despite what Sophia says about them, probably because their political views do not align. Well, when I first read this, bro, I was kind of, about that whole thing, zooming with the family. But given the fact that you said that they were always good to you, which you have to respect, the brother, the family... This may potentially be a way to get them to get her to back the fuck off. If you do agree to do a Zoom session to talk about her mental health, I would do it on the basis that, okay, it's just going to be us. But if, if she suddenly pops her head in the Zoom thing, we're done. And I'd make it abundantly clear if you do this, that I say, look, she has been harassing me, harassing me, my family, my, my parents, my sister, my friends, posting slanderous things about me online. And I'm telling you right now, family, as much as I like you and you were good to me, if she keeps this shit up, I will contact an attorney. I will file a restraining order against her. I will then go after her for slander or any other things. So let me make this clear. She cuts this shit out right now. Otherwise, you're not going to get my help. And even that, I wouldn't, I would do the Zoom thing, but I wouldn't be an active participant in helping her. Making clear with the family, this is what I'm going to do. Mean business. And that way, if it comes to that, they can't be surprised. Uh, I truly do believe that maybe Sophia's mental health has been greatly affecting her by her wild face. 
and she thinks that getting married, having kids, will automatically fix her life and put everything back on track for her. That's probably what she's thinking, but uh, I, I think she's so screwed up, I don't want to get in her head. But who cares? Shouldn't be your problem. But nothing is ever as simple as that. And I don't think she's in love with me, but she's in love with the idea of getting married to me. Yeah, she thinks that if she gets with you, then all her issues will be gone. But you think that she won't be a carousel rider if she got with you or any other dude? Come on. For what I've gathered, her, she and her friends do, categor, don't, do not categorize me in the top 1% of guys, and Sophia is just settling for me. Or rather, she is just settling for me because I can fulfill a romance, a romance movie fantasy of hers, wherein the strong, empowered woman comes back to her hometown, sweetheart, after years of being apart, and they get married. Which sounds very cheesy to me. Yeah, that's like some bullshit Hallmark movie they show around uh, Christmas time. Believe me, I've seen some of them. Total bullshit. Uh, Sophia's delusions and her uh, women deserve everything mentality has made her prone to tantrums, lash outs directed at people closest to me. I will try my best to put an end to all this without directly talking to her. If it ever comes to the worst, I can just get a restraining order. There you go. Now you're thinking, my man. So yes, SSM, this is my update for now. I do not feel this may be the final update if everything goes smoothly, but if not, I will let you know and your audience know. Bro, I can tell you, I've done this long enough to know there is no way this is over. We're, we're going to hear from you again because uh-uh, you can't stop here. We, we, we want more of this. We want to know what happens if you Zoom with her family. We want to know what happens if you do the restraining order. There, th- this is not over. You're, this, this is not over. So be prepared to send me another story in two to three weeks and we'll all enjoy it. It ain't over, bro. Uh-uh. Uh, I'm also grateful and overwhelmed that your video had made, made it on my email about 60,000 plus views. I hope that my current situation can be used as a lesson to men to be aware of their effinous ex-girlfriends and how to handle them. I hope that you have a great day and God bless. Bro, I'm having a wonderful day and I thank you for sending your story. And by the way, you said when you wrote this, the uh, previous video, like 60-some thousand, well, I just looked as 96,000. So your story is very popular. So man, if you're going to do the Zoom session with the family, think it over. Now, a couple days, and do it as a favor. Do it for two reasons. As a favor, because the brother and the family were good to you back in the day, and you got to respect that, and if they're good people. But two, is a potential way to get her away from you. And if you do it, make it abundantly clear, it's just you guys, not her. And in that Zoom video, when they're all talking about her and worried about her mental health, make it clear. This is what she's been doing to me, to my family, to my friends, and posting all this stuff online, making me look bad. And as much as I like you, old family... If this continues, I mean, one more time of this, I will contact an attorney and have a restraining order put against her, and I will then see what can be done about her slander, slander online. Make it abundantly clear you mean business, and hopefully they will then use their influence to get her to back the fuck off you. But if not, be prepared to uh, stand by what you say. And if you say that, you better mean it and do it. I'm telling you that right now, because if you say that and then don't do it, they're not going to respect you, and she certainly won't respect you. But at that point then, yeah, restraining or block or all that. But otherwise, do not talk to her. In any way, shape, or form, do not talk to her at all. Because that's just going to encourage her to keep on coming after you. And if you Zoom with the family and they want you to talk to her, say no. Under no circumstances. None. You're doing this as a courtesy to them to help them out. But anyhow, guys, lots of good part things to learn from this story here. Aside from the entertainment factor, because I know you're all laughing about that. Nobody can miss... The video title about the chick having 300 dudes, which is probably why y'all clicked on it and couldn't resist watching this, if we're being honest. But so many lessons in this story. It's amazing how they break up with the guy to be free, free spirits and all that. And then later on down the road, surprise, surprise, guys don't want to get with them when they have potentially 300 or, I don't know, a thousand different dudes on their belt. And they go back to the guy they broke up with. And a lot of times in these stories, the guy will take them back, which is a smack-worthy moment. But this guy didn't, thank God. And how about that number 30? How they fear that 30 and they will do anything to get to that 30 without at least have a ring on their finger or on the way to the altar. So for you guys, remember, you guys in your mid-20s on up, be careful. Be careful with the women that suddenly start paying attention to you that would have done it earlier because they're probably looking to settle for that nice guy before the number 30 comes. So lots of really good entertaining things in this story. So bro, like I said, there is no way this is over. I know there's going to be more shit to tell, so by all means, move forward and uh, 
you can come back a few weeks from now and let us all know how things are doing. I guarantee you the audience will want to hear from it. In fact, guys, if, you, if you're watching this video to this point, comment below. Tell him that if you want a part three to this, you want to hear more what's going on with her and her family and the zooming and all, whatever. Let this guy know you want part three, the final update. And then we can do final, final updates and all that. And you get you guys get the joke. All right, guys, that is it for today. Be sure to comment down below. Let me know what you think about this. Let this guy know what you think about his story. And, of course, the final update, part three. And be sure to like the video, share with your friends, and subscribe. And I'll catch you next time.